Well, thank you for the invitation to speak about how, when, and where to utilize erlotinib, gefitinib, and afatinib in EGFR mutation positive non small cell lung cancer. My disclosure. So we know that um, NCCN guidelines suggest for these patients or erlotinib, gefitinib, or afatinib. The story started with IPAS trial. And as you can see, the median progression-free survival was better when patients had EGFR mutation positive tumor. But on the other hand, and I'll see if you can see here, when the mutation status was negative, it was the other way around. So when you don't know or you do not have mutation-positive tumor, you should not use in first-line gefitinib. URTAC trial compared erlotinib to or docetaxel cisplatin or gemcitabine cisplatin, and 174 patients were randomized with primary endpoint of progression-free survival. And you can see that uh, erlotinib was superior to the platinum doublet with medium progression of free survival 9.7 months. So when we look at the reversible first generation EGFR TKIs, such as gefitinib or erlotinib, we can see that we have reached now um, a progression free survival of 9.5 months and 9.7 months, and I will mainly focus on the trials which were approved by regulatory agencies. Some other trials might have had some irregularities. Now, uh, afatinib was um, tried in lux lung 3 and lux lung 6 trials. These are the largest pr um, prospective trials um, 345 and 364 patients randomized. And first time, we have the best platinum doublet in lux lung 3 to compare with afatinib, cisplatin, and pemetrexet. Also here, we have about 11% of uncommon mutations, unlike the other trials. Primary endpoint was PFS, and unlike in URTAC, or IPAS trial, we have independent review for the PFS. So independent review is important. You can see here in lux lung 3 trial, response rate falls from 75 to 60.8% by independent review. It's 15% difference. So independent review is the important. So when we look at the common mutations, exon 19 deletion or exon 21 point mutation, we can see that now that the median PFS is 13.6 months compared to 6.9 months because this platin pemetrexet is the best doublet to compare these patients to. The median progression free survival now is 6.9 months. So what is the impact on overall survival, and you can see here that the median progression for the survival, I will repeat again, 9.5, 9.7 months, 13.6, and now we are reaching median overall survival, 30.3 versus 26.2 months. So we are over two years now. And when you look at the subgroups, you can see that the hazard ratio 0.54 as 0.64 is best for the group of patients with exon 19 deletion. And when we look at uh, adverse events reported, I would like to point out, look at the diarrhea. Lux lung 3 was a global trial, sometimes one, two patients per center, and you have grade three or higher a diarrhea in 14.4% of patients. Lux lung 6 was mainly Chinese trial, and uh, the investigators 
were experienced how to manage EGFR-TKIs, so the grade three diarrhea dropped to 5.4%. And of course, you have rash, stomatitis, paronychia, which are the side effects of EGFR-TKIs. Just to remind you again, overall survival in exon 19 uh, deletion subgroup in lux lung 3 and lux lung 6, 33.3, versus 21.1 months median. So here we have difference of one year, and the similar situation is in lux lung 6. So we are not gaining two, three, four months, but it's a substantial difference. When we look at Exxon 1921 deletion, never smokers, ever smokers, females, males, in the other trials, with reversible EGFR TKI, you can see there is no significant difference in overall survival. So I mentioned to you that about 11% of patients in lux lung 3 and 6 had uncommon mutations, and I just want to briefly point out we had 75 patients to look at with uncommon mutations, and uh, when you look, they are divided in group one, two, and three, and the significance with afatinib was in group one. It was mainly exon 18 mutation. And uh, you can see that the median uh, pr progression-free survival 10.7 months, and median overall survival 18.6 months. So in certain uncommon mutations, afatinib is a good choice. I also want to briefly mention brain metastases in lux lung 3 and 6. If patients had brain metastases, they still had a good medium progression-free survival a response rate, as you can see here. And what was interesting is that time to CNS progression in median months, 15.2, both in lux lung 3 and lux lung 6 compared to patients who were on chemotherapy. Now, I will say just a few words about dose adjustment in lux lung 3 and 6. You know that, for example, gefitinib is 250 milligrams, and you cannot dose adjust. Uh, we don't have any data if you give gefitinib every two days. So, Afatinib starts usually with 40 milligrams. You can give even 50 milligrams, but you can adjust to 30 and 20 milligrams. In the trial, if patient had diarrhea over 48 hours, he could get 30 milligrams. If uh, vomiting was over uh, seven days, there could be adjustment. Uh, so we have those adjustment. And, um, in lux lung 3 trial, 53%, and lux lung 6 trial, 28% of patients were adjusted. Um, and you see the baseline characteristics were well balanced. And when you look at pre and post treatment, uh, you can see diarrhea, rash, stomatitis, and nail effect. Look at the blue, the grade three. You can see significant decrease to a certain point that it is not there anymore, uh, grade three, for example, for stomatitis in lux lung three and so on. So we can significantly reduce the side effects by dose reduction. Now, what was interesting to find out is that if you decrease to 30 milligrams from 40 milligrams for grade three toxicity, the plasma levels actually become the same because if there is a grade three toxicity, the plasma level was higher. So that is interesting. And it shows also that PFS is similar in patients with or without dose reduction of afatinib which happens during the first six months. You can see 11.3 to 11 months in lux lung 3 and 12.3 to 11 months in lux lung 6. So PFS is not influenced. So we have now three TKIs uh, indicated in the first line EGFR mutation positive non-small cell lung cancer, the gefitinib erlotinib, and the pan-herb family blocker afatinib. 
and uh, these inhibitors provide a substantial PFS benefit as well as improvement in quality of life, which I don't have today time to go into. Afatinib shows an improvement in overall survival particularly in patients harboring mutation in exon 19. That was the conclusion when we compared to chemotherapy doublet. Now, I'm going to now show you some results from lux 7 trial, which compared irreversible versus reversible EGFR blockade, afatinib versus jefitinib. Randomization was one-to-one. -one. Uh, and Treatment beyond progression was allowed if deemed clinical benefit by investigator. Primary endpoints were PFS by independent review, time to treatment failure, and overall survival, and then the usual secondary endpoints. So here you have PFS, 11, median 11 versus 10.9 months, and if you look carefully at the at the curves, you see that about at 11 months, they start to separate. And at 18 months, the median PFS, in 20, uh, the PFS is in 27% patients versus 15 on jefitinib, 18% versus 8% at 24 months. So the curve separate, hazard ratio 0.73, and p-value 0.01. And uh, when you look at different subgroups, you can see that mainly it's a favor to afatinib. Times of treatment failure, median 13.7 months compared to 11.5 months. Now, time to treatment failure means that you allow treatment beyond progression. You still have clinical benefit. P-value 0.007. And when you look, um, at the treatment failure at 24 months, 25% versus 13% of patients, and at 30 months, 15% versus 5% of patients are without treatment failure. And when you look at different mutation types, again, by independent review PFS, you can see for exon 19 deletion, 12.7 versus 11 months, and for exon 21 deletion, 10.9 versus 10.8 months. So uh, there is a numerical, but not statically, statistically significant benefit. Objective response rate is 70% versus 56% on jefitinib, with very significant p-value 0.008 and median duration of response, 10.1 versus 8.4 months. Now the overall survival in the overall po population, you can see 27.9 months median survival versus 24.5 months. So there is 3.4 months advantage to afatinib, though because it's not a phase three trial and number of patients Patience is not that big. It doesn't reach significance, but there is a 3.4 months difference. And when you look at different subgroups, most of the subgroups favor afatinib. When you look at overall survival by EGFR mutation subtype, exon 19 deletion, 30.7 versus 26.4 months. So more than four months difference, but not significant p-value, hazard ratio 0.83. And when you look at L858R, or exon 21 point mutation, you can see 25 versus 21.2 months, hazard ratio 0.91. Now the toxicities, again, the usual ones, diarrhea, rash, stomatitis, and paronychia, and you can see when you look at grade three that with afantinib it's 11.9 versus 1.3 uh, percent, and uh, rash 9.4, 3.1, and so on. So there is slightly more drug-related adverse event incidents, but it is manageable. You just have to know how to manage it. 
Now, drug-related adverse events leading to discontinuation, you can see on afatinib, diarrhea, fatigue, toxic skin eruptions, and on uh, jafitinib, uh, increased liver enzymes, and interstitial lung disease, ILD. So the discontinuation rate in both arms is 6.3%, and the reasons are as I mentioned. And uh, those reduction of fatinib within the first six months of treatment did not affect efficacy. You can see here uh, median months of uh, PFS, 12.8 versus 11 months, with uh, actually numerical advantage uh, for less than 40 milligrams. And uh, again, when we reduce a fatinib dose, we have a lower incidence of grade three toxicities, diarrhea, rash, stomatitis, and paronychia, as you can see here in this study. So in conclusion, we have choice of EGFR-TKI therapy, and we have to individualize. We individualize on the basis of performance status, mm -hmm comorbidities, and also patient's choice. We explain to them differences of certain drugs, but in my experience, young peop people, young <laughs> patients who have small children, every day of life counts. So if I have a patient with good performance status and no significant, no significant comorbidities, and patient accepts when I explain to him the side effects, I give him first line afatinib. Um, why? Because I showed you the data on better progression-free survival, time to treatment failure, overall response rate, duration of response. And in Lux Lung 3 and 6, we saw better uh, pros, the cough, dyspnea, pain, and fatigue and also better the global health-related quality of life. I put Lux Lung 8 there. Uh, you will probably hear about it, but it's second line in squamous cancer when, where afatinib was compared to erlotinib, and there also we could see a better global health-related quality of life and pros. So uh, this is my opinion, and I thank you for attention.